at the crossroads. <clears throat> Where to next? Crossroads is certainly something that illustrates the situation well when it comes to nuclear politically and commercially. There are many questions in the air, both at the EU and national levels. Will there be financing available on competitive terms for nuclear projects, be them lifetime extensions or new build projects? Will national measures such as direct phase outs or very high taxation cause nuclear plants to close prematurely? Do we have uh, cost efficient supply chains in place so that aging European nuclear fleet can make lifetime extensions in a profitable manner? Does the current car market remunerate sufficiently all the benefits nuclear is providing for the whole system, which ena enables networks to function without interruptions that can lead even to blackouts? So many open questions that the word crossroads illustrates well. And I'm sure that uh, these issues will be highlighted during the two sessions we will have today and tomorrow. Today, we will focus more on public perception issues and uh, tomorrow on decarbonization, both crucial elements of nuclear's future. As we see it, nuclear is not the solution, but there is hardly a solution without nuclear. With these words, I would like to welcome you once again. And I guess it is now the time to introduce the four keynote speakers. The first speaker is Mr. Rafael Grossi, Director General of IAEA. Unfortunately, <laughs> Mr. Grossi was unable to attend this session, which means that uh, he will be virtual in this virtual meeting. In other words, we will hear his keynote as a video that we will put on the screen right now. Could we please ask people to mute their microphones and switch off their cameras if possible? Thank you. Dear friends and colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, nuclear power has a unique potential to meet the pressing concerns of our time, from climate change to sustainable development. Among the challenges for those of us who are advocates for the benefits of nuclear energy is finding ways to reach beyond the so-called converted. We must clearly communicate the scientific facts to the public. We must also effectively engage with them and a wide range of stakeholders that include policy and decision makers and key members of civil society. What do we tell them? How do we make the case for nuclear energy? These are important questions and they need answers. Because the time for decisions is upon us. If nuclear power is to realize its full potential in helping countries to achieve net zero emissions by mid-century, stakeholder engagement and trust will be vital. And here, I believe the IAEA plays an important, maybe a unique role. The IAEA safety standards, security guidance, and the global safeguards regime that it enforces remain the bedrock of trust for peaceful nuclear activities around the world. However, to scale up nuclear power to its true potential, we will need broader and more active engagement across a variety of fronts. The agency, because of its global membership, normative 
and standard setting competencies has a distinctive and unique role to play as enabler of international cooperation. And it is my intention to do just that. For example, when it comes to newcomers, as you know, last year saw the arrival of two new operating countries, Belarus and the United Arab Emirates, after a decade of work with the agency on developing the necessary infrastructure. We are engaged with many more newcomers who hope to follow in their footsteps. Just this month, the agency completed a nuclear infrastructure review mission to Uzbekistan. We have three more reviews of this kind planned for later this year to Kenya, Sri Lanka and Uganda. All of them developing countries eager for clean and reliable energy to improve living standards and drive their growing economies. Small modular reactors are mentioned everywhere because they have the potential to greatly expand the market for nuclear power as a new option towards energy needs and the fight against climate change. Recently, the agency established a one-stop shop for members seeking support on all facets of SMRs, whether technology development and deployment, infrastructure, economics, safety, regulatory issues or security or even safeguards. This new platform will further strengthen the agency's support on SMRs with a aim to accelerate the effective development and deployment of this important new technology. But nuclear is not only a reality today, it's only opportunity and possibility for the future. Looking ahead, these are exciting times for nuclear fusion, which is beginning to leave the halls and laboratories of science towards the realm of technological deployment. This is very exciting. ITER is proceeding at a steady pace and is at a critical step towards the goal of harnessing fusion energy. Last month, at our biennial fusion energy conference, I invited member states sponsoring fusion programs, as well as the emerging fusion industry and the increasing number of private partners to join the IAEA in undertaking a feasibility study. This work for which we are actively consulting all stakeholders will encompass the full scope of fusion pilot plant criteria and produce a set of technologically neutral requirements for the safe, secure and economically sound deployment of future fusion reactors. Nuclear is resilient and we have proven so. Due to COVID-19 pandemic, we have been in a difficult situation, but I'm proud to say that we never stop supporting nuclear power operating countries, despite the lockdowns and the travel restrictions. We also adapted our services to the new challenges our member states faced. For example, we set up a platform to enable member states to share experiences in responding to the pandemic and to facilitate mutual learning for the benefit of all. At the same time, we surveyed major reactor-based medical isotope producers to assess the continuity of the supply chain during this pandemic. This work provided important assurances to the, and information to the international medical community. The agency also enhanced and expanded a new set of guidelines for long-term operating power reactors, which are important to the clean energy transition, as well as early phase nuclear power plant operation and research reactors. This is providing useful guidance until in-person review missions 
fully resumed, and we are doing just that these days. Of course, no one can forget climate change and the challenge it poses. Beyond the operational level, we are going all out on partnerships for climate action. On my first trip in office to the UN Climate Change Conference in Madrid in 2019, we laid the groundwork for strengthening cooperation on nuclear power and the clean energy transition with the International Energy Agency. This has resulted in increased joint work as well as participation by IEA and myself in mutual events, including the IAEA Scientific Forum last September, the IEA COP26 Net Zero Summit in March, and an event at the very recent Clean Energy Ministerial Summit. Nuclear needs partnerships like this one, but there are more. We have also bolstered ties with traditional partners, such as the Nuclear Energy Agency of the OECD, the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe, the World Nuclear Association, and the Generation 4 International Forum. These relationships are starting to bear fruit. For example, our experts contributed to the important re recent UNICE report that showed nuclear power as a key role to play in the sustainable energy future. Nuclear and renewables are the two principal currently available options for low emission energy generation. And synergies among these resources have yet to be fully exploited. The agency is active on several fronts, technical meetings, publications, and research projects, supporting our member states in better understanding the ways in which nuclear power and renewables can complement one another for a successful clean energy transition. For example, recently we launched a coordinated research project to bring together current state-of-the-art knowledge on simulation, analysis, optimization, and deployment of nuclear renewable hybrid energy systems, including for co-generation such as hydrogen production. This study is drawing on experts from a variety of IAA partner institutions. Of course, partnerships come in many forms. We are also engaging with young engineers, and scientists who can bring new ideas for the future of nuclear energy. Ensuring a, a talent pipeline is critically important, and that pipeline must obviously include women. Through our Marie Sklodowska Curie Fellowship Program, which I launched last year, and thanks to the commitment and support of our member states, we have awarded already scholarships to a first group of 100 female students for graduate studies in nuclear science and technology. And this is just the beginning. The second cycle is starting as we speak. The IAEA is looking forward to a strong presence at COP26 in the United Kingdom later in the year. We want to be as vocal as possible in presenting the scientific facts on the benefits of nuclear power in the fight against climate change. We are working closely with the UK government and other partners such as the IEA, as I, as I mentioned just a minute ago, on possible joint activities at COP26. On a recent visit I paid to the United Kingdom, I also exchanged views with the government, governmental ministers on how to further strengthen our cooperation at COP26 and beyond. In closing, dear friends, let me go back to the questions I raised at the start. Why do we ask ourselves how we should make our case to stakeholders? Because, as we know, nuclear energy can help address pressing global issues, but earning trust, 
surmounting misinformation and disinformation are essential. The IAEA increasingly recognizes the importance of supporting its member states on stakeholder involvement. It is indispensable to their peaceful activities across the nuclear field, even beyond energy production. We are helping to build their capacities to effectively engage with stakeholders through guidance publications, trainings, workshops, webinars, and expert review missions. And this area of our work continues to grow. Indeed, the agency is currently engaged in a project to study the experiences of nuclear facility stakeholders at the level, for example, of local communities, a key topic of your assembly, as I understand, this year. Recently in Europe, we have seen significant stakeholder engagement and science communications in relation to the EU taxonomy regulation. This process, as you all know, still has to play out. But whatever the outcome, engaging stakeholders will improve their understanding as to why decisions are taken. Such understanding ultimately forms the basis for greater trust and better decisions. The clean energy transition is a serious undertaking. But if we all work together openly and transparently, we will succeed. By working together, we can ensure that no country is left behind and that collectively we drive emissions to net zero by 2050. So thank you, Mr. Grossi. I certainly appreciated the words, the forward looking words and views on on uh, future developments like fusion, small modular reactors and hydrogen production. There is certainly a need for scientific facts on the contribution of nuclear in, in combating climate change and uh, recognition that uh, renewables and nuclear can and should coexist if we are seriously combating and mitigating the climate change. Now I have an honor to welcome Minister Kiborze Setvertinsky from the Ministry of Climate and Environment in Poland. Poland is, as, as you all know, a country with uh, no nuclear at the moment, but uh, is committed to build several reactors. So Mr. Minister, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for, for the invitation to speak today um, at this uh, Foratum Conference, uh, Nuclear Europe uh, 2021. Uh, I, it's really a, a pleasure for me to, to have the opportunity to address you um, today um, and, and discuss these very important topics uh, related to, to nuclear energy, uh, its role in a in a in a climate neutral uh, world, in a climate neutral Europe in 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 2050, and also its its perception in in the public uh, opinion, and with with this central question of of where do we go, um, where do we go next? Um, it is clear from from our perspective, but but it is also confirmed by the analysis. Um, of uh, a number of uh, scientists, um, of experts, that nuclear energy will play a crucial role uh, in our transition to a climate neutral economy. I am uh, therefore uh, um, convinced that uh, the, the effort of, um, of this community uh, will um, be a significant contribution in meeting uh, our targets uh, as a, as a continent. As you know, in Poland, we also have a huge challenge with our transfor own transformation. Um, today, uh, we are heavily uh, relying 
on um, polluting uh, uh, fossil fuel, highly emissive, with a highly emissive energy mix, with more than 70% coal in our uh, electricity uh, uh, today. And obviously, the, the transformation of that uh, uh, energy system uh, will not happen overnight, but it will be uh, it will be a lengthy and and and, and difficult uh, process. But we're convinced we uh, we can uh, we can get there. Earlier this year, in in February, the government adopted the energy policies uh, our ministry had proposed, um, and one of the central element in this energy policy is the transformation of our energy mix and the need, the ambition over the next two decades to build uh, uh, zero emission energy system of a similar size to the one we we we, we had installed uh, last year, that is about 40 gigawatt of, of zero emission uh, energy sources, uh, uh, largely uh, renewables with a, a lot of investment in, 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 this, in this area, but also uh, um, uh, nuclear, as a, as a stable uh, a source able to uh, provide uh, uh, the stability we need in the, um, in, in the grid and the baseload we, um, uh, uh, for, for the energy system. And, um, and therefore, um, the nuclear energy uh, will play uh, a central role in, in decarbonizing our, our mix. Uh, we aim at building um, six reactors. Um, depending on the on the technology, it would give from six to to nine gigawatts of uh, of installed capacity, and that will be uh, uh, ultimately accounting for about fifteen percent of um, uh, of our mix. Uh, we plan to see the first reactor uh, built in twenty thirty three, and then every other year um, uh, a new reactor. So to finish the program by by 2043, and uh, and this is um, this is obviously a a, 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 comp a complex uh, uh, project, and we are now at the um, at the stage uh, of uh, the uh, finalizing the environmental impact assessment for the sites that were preselected uh, for the uh, in the. Polish um, nuclear energy uh, program. We have also adapted the uh, uh, ownership structure of the of the company uh, um, running the project, with uh, um, taking over by the by the state uh, from the from the energy companies that were uh, that were uh, involved uh, uh, so far, and we see um, this program of um, developing nuclear energy in our mix, not only as central to transform our mix uh, to, to towards zero emission, but also uh, central uh, to ensure um, competitiveness of our uh, economy and uh, and uh, in the long run, um, and also to provide um, uh, for new opportunities for Polish companies. Uh, to be involved in this uh, in this project, we estimate that the project will generate somewhere around uh, thirty uh, thousand uh, jobs uh, over um, its uh, its its duration, and and obviously uh, an important role as well uh, of uh, Polish companies in the in the in the supply supply chain uh, for um, for these reactors. As, as we are um, um, moving uh, uh, with this high pace um, towards uh, climate neutrality and towards a new energy system in Poland, we have decided that we should rely on existing and the, and the most uh, uh, um, advanced existing uh, nuclear uh, energy uh, technology for which we have um, experience knowledge uh, needed uh, to be sure that we can actually develop that uh, that program on time and this is why we have decided uh, uh, to to go for the proven technology of um, of the pressurized water uh, uh, reactors uh, 
obviously, and, and uh, Mr. Grassi was reflecting uh, on the, the, the importance also of the EU uh, and the discussion in the EU in this, in this context. And I think it is, mm -hmm. it is indeed uh, highly relevant um, to, to the plans that, um, that we have and, and the ambitions that we, that we have. Uh, to tackle climate change, to reach the objectives of the of the Paris Agreement, and to make the EU uh, climate neutral uh, by 2050, uh, we will need a wide array of technologies. And this is why, personally, I, I was really disappointed when I saw the the decision of the Commission to to go with a, a delegated act for the taxonomy that is only partially addressing. Um, the, the technologies we will we will need only partially addressing even the environmental challenges that we that we face and um, and 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 ignoring some of the more uh, the more crucial uh, um, technologies in that uh, in that transition in that new uh, uh, climate uh, uh, neutral uh, world and this is obviously uh, um, uh, a place where um, uh, an organization like for Atom also has a has a, a role to play in that discussion to to offer um, decision makers with um, key uh, information studies um, fact-based uh, analysis that provides the strong rationale um, for our uh, colleagues in, uh, in 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 Brussels in the Commission but also later in the council and in the Parliament to take the right um, the right uh, uh, to set the right uh, policies uh, for the development and transformation of our energy systems. Um, that's um, I presented in a, in, a, in a nutshell um, our ambition as as Poland to transform our energy mix, um, our uh, our plans in this regard, and a strong uh, role for nuclear energy. In this in this transformation, um, and and our um, uh, concern that uh, the, the the policies we uh, we we set uh, jointly in the EU should also be uh, made coherent with those objectives, uh, those climate objectives, and the need uh, to uh, to to reach a, a climate neutral uh, a climate neutral EU by 2050. Um, and uh, I wanted to to thank you very much once again for for the invitation to speak uh, to speak today, and I wish you uh, a very fruitful uh, discussion uh, during the day. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Poland, given its current energy supply, certainly has some challenges not only in decarbonization, but also providing competitive energy supply to its economy. And uh, I can, we can see that uh, you have quite courageously prepared a plan, a nuclear plan, and uh, we, we hope all the best for your ambitious nuclear program. Cannot agree more that uh, uh, at the EU level, the policies, policies will have to be coherent, and that we would like to see technology neutral appro approach towards the climate change mitigation policies. But now, with these words, I think it uh, offers a good bridge to our next speaker, Mr. Christophe Krudler, member of the European Parliament from France. He's active in the nuclear free field and highly respected member of the industry, energy and research committee. As we know, nuclear is an issue where opinions in the EU are divided and uh, perhaps this division is the most visible in the European Parliament. So interested in hearing your views, Mr. Grudler, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Chair. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be with you today for, for the annual uh, event uh, of Foretum on nuclear energy. Uh, I want to, to, to thank uh, Foretum uh, and in particular Yves de Bazeille for its kind invitation. Uh, 
as most of you are experts uh, on nuclear energy, I will not try to compete uh, with you on the technical uh, level. But today, I would like to give you three inputs uh, in order to answer the questions of your conference. Where to next? Uh, my first point will be next is carbon neutrality. Uh, as you know, the European Union is committed to achieving um, carbon neutrality by 2050. To this end, I believe that nuclear energy has a key role to play uh, to reach this goal. Together with an expected and needed increase of renewables, nuclear is to be the backbone of a born free European power system. I'm afraid that without nuclear power, the EU will not be able to achieve the, this goal of carbon neutrality because the challenge will be even bigger without this source of energy. In particular, uh, as it is very likely uh, that demand for electricity in Europe will continue to rise over the next few years, especially with the growing electro electrification of transportation, heating, on industry. Moreover, a key advantage of nuclear energy is that it can be produced in continuity and serve as a base load production, something that it's much more difficult to reach with renewables. The solution is not to put uh, these two types of energies in opposition, but to use the best of each energy and combine them to have a greener Europe. Finally, it is important to remember that the carbon footprint of nuclear energy is smaller than several renewable energies. CO2 emissions need to be looking during the whole life cycle, not just during the usage. Despite all these advantages, the, the nuclear energy is not seen as a key to the carbon neutrality. Very often, when, when I meet my, my citizens, my fellow citizens, they believe that nuclear emits a lot of CO2, especially when they see the, the large cooling towers uh, and the white smoke uh, coming out of, of them. Uh, therefore, I think that there is a lot of work to do to raise awareness in the public of the role that nuclear can play in the energy transition. My second point uh, is that there is a need for more investment in future nuclear technologies. Adaptation to the changing world is essential for the sector to remain competitive. Nuclear power has an undeniable potential to help shape the energy system of tomorrow. Here, I want to underline the interest of SMRs, which are a promising technology for the sector, it should enable adaptation to new needs and have many advantages. They are particularly interesting for supplying clean electricity to remote areas such as Iceland. Iceland sorry. Uh, their, their small size and high mobility are particularly interesting assets. SMR are, of course, modular, it's in the name, SMRs, uh, and uh, can be built at lower costs. They are very much adaptable, and this flexibility is a strength. SMRs are also about strategic autonomy. This technology is part of the future of the sector. The European Union must position itself quickly to become a leader in this field, just like USA, Russia, or China. I had the, the pleasure to hold uh, an event a few days ago on SMRs, and I fully welcome the workshop uh, that the European Commission will hold later in June on this topic. When we think about future technology, we also need to speak about nuclear fusion, of course. Uh, when the ITER project ongoing on the first magnet installed in April 2021, we are making tangible progress toward the production of the first plasma. The EU is committed to make the, this experience a success 
as we waited for a funding of 5.6 billion euros between 2021 and 2027. Of course, uh, it will take some years before we have the first results of the ITER projects. But as soon as we have them, we need to be ready to build production units in Europe, of course. The last point that uh, which I, I would like to, to draw your attention is the public acceptance of nuclear power. Uh, European citizens need to see that it is a safe and future proof energy together with renewable energy. Therefore, it is important to build trust with citizens. The industry must be able to demonstrate the high reliability and security of this energy. This uh, includes um, strengthening safety, control measures, and to communicate about it. Transparency is also very important. And when I say transparency, uh, it is um, also very important to have it in less democratic countries as they are not always keen uh, to share information when they have some technical issues. Of course, uh, I, I think this morning uh, about what is happening in China, where the latest information is not always uh, well, uh, available. Even if uh, for security reasons, it is important to keep some secrecy about the interior of nuclear power plants. It will be good that citizens see and know more about the reality of this energy. Here, it is also necess necessary to improve the work on the question of nuclear waste, in particular in the communities around projects of long-term storage. Before making such projects, the industry needs to be absolutely certain of the absence of risks and then communication about the research done to reach this conclusion. More generally, the link with the public must involve a competitive, uh, collective awareness about energy production. If I take uh, France, for example, many people perceive um, nuclear energy as a dangerous and costly energy, even if nuclear energy power uh, if nuclear energy powered the house for decades now for a lower energy cost than many other countries. We need to recall it, uh, to recall that it is a source that provides millions of European citizens with renewable electricity every year. Of course, uh, we need to respect that each member state has its own energy mix and that some refuse to use nuclear energy, something that I personally regret. But this diversity should not prevent us from making progress in the countries that use this source of energy. Well, a clear message around carbon neutrality, more investments uh, in future technologies on building trust with citizens, these are my three answers to what is next. Uh, to conclude, I, I will say that it is important to get out of a binary vision for or against nuclear power. This is not an ideological battle, and we need to get out of it. The objective must remain to produce really, really reliable, clean, and affordable energy to all European citizens. As a member of the Energy Committee in the European Parliament, I will stay committed to this objective. Thank you for your attention and I wish you a fruitful conference. Thank you very much, Mr. Krudler. We as the nuclear industry we take carbon neutrality as a fact. This is a target that we are we are committed wholeheartedly. And like I said at the beginning in my introduction, nuclear is not the solution, but it's hard to see any solution without nuclear. There we fully agree. 
We also think that new developments, research, innovation is necessary for the future of the nuclear. We hope that this is also visible in the EU research and innovation financing so that uh, beyond the ITER project, also the other nuclear developments could be could be financed. SMRs play an, will, play, will play an important role in that regard as well, not only for electricity, probably also for heat production. Public acceptance, only full transparency can uh, be a success factor towards trust, which is then on which we can build uh, public acceptance. This is really, really important, and um, especially for nuclear, also for, for all energy in the, uh, investments. Nobody seems to want to have any production site, nor a transmission line or a pipeline nearby. But this is an uh, issue that we will have to have to uh, sort out as an industry. And it is indeed so that the future of nuclear is not only in the hands of policymakers. Also, the industry itself has a great deal to do with its future, obviously. Mr. Jarmo Tanhua, president and CEO of TVO, the Finnish utility, operating now three units in Olkiluoto in Finland, as the third one is uh, um, up and running and uh, start commercial operations in a, in a few months' time. Uh, Mr. Tanhua is today also here representing the Nuclear Europe leaders, a gathering of the most senior representatives of the U uh, European nuclear industry. So from the horse's mouth or from the industry itself, uh, Mr. Tanhua, the floor is yours. Thank you, Esa. And thank you for the opportunity to, to give this, this short speech and, and share my greetings from, from the industry and, and from Olkiluoto, Finland. Many people, nuclear opponents, but, but also ourselves also think and, and keep the image that, that nuclear industry is a, some kind of a dinosaur that, that cannot change and, and doesn't need to change. But it's it's clear, and and I will bring here some some ideas for for areas, practical areas, what what we can do as an industry to change our methods and and principles and and ways ways how we work. In addition to to two operating power plant units, what we have, we we also have the greatest climate act in in Finland, perhaps even in 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 Europe, as as, as I said. Olkiluoto 3 in the commissioning phase, and we will start the, the power production within within a couple of couple of months in 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 October. And the idea is to to operate that unit at least for 60 years from from now on. We also have the solution for the for the most difficult question: What do we do with uh, with uh, spent nuclear fuel? We have started our own color project, a big half a billion euros project to, to build up the encapsulation plant and the final disposal facilities and start the, the, the work, start to put the, the spent nuclear fuel in, in Finnish bedrock within a, only a couple of, of years. And this work will then, then continue at least for 100 years or so. So future is very important for the industry, and we have the have the future in in front of us. The core of our business is clearly, and we all know it, it's the safety. No question about it. But the biggest challenge at the moment is the competitiveness. We can always say that that, that the reason for the competitiveness or difficulties with the competitiveness is is regulation or, or something else, but but first, we have to look into the mirror and, and, and think what we as an industry can do better. How can we improve our, our ways of working? I raise here four areas. First one is, is the use of more high quality industrial standard uh, components. 
quality development has has been has improved in in many areas quite much perhaps 40 years ago nuclear was was leading the the quality but but nowadays if you look at gas or oil industry or especially the aviation industry they are using high quality can standard components in their industries and and they work fine safety is on a high level this is something we we have we have to learn somehow from from those use those those uh, use those methods also in in our industry another uh, uh, area is, is the harmonization of the requirement level we have at the moment 14 nuclear countries nuclear uh, power countries in in europe and we have more than 14 different regulations for for that and and this is this is quite difficult we we need to get rid of the country specific requirements and have a common play play field for the for the whole industry current processes and and qualification processes and operating practices are more or less laborious we have started a kelpo project in finland where where we start to tackle these both both issues industrial standard components using and 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 then this this requirement level and we have already now within a couple of years only we have reached quite good results up to 50 percent savings per per project by using other industries good methods of course it's not only costs we are talking about important issue is that that we need the vendors industry need the good vendors good reliable vendors and if we make this display field too difficult for the vendors, they will disappear. So we have to be able to cooperate with the, with the high quality vendors so that they can deliver us components and, and the safety, finally the safety, what we need. Third area, what was already talked today is, is the taxonomy. I mean, our industry is sustainable, we know it. So, so the taxonomy issue is more a political test for the nuclear power. Do we have enough support for the nuclear on, on a EU level? Finland's position is quite clear. Uh, from the Ministry of Economy and Employment, Director General Riku Huttunen stated just a couple of days ago like this. Nuclear power plays an integral and growing role as an energy source in Finland. Policies and legislation should be neutral when it comes to choices between sustainable energy sources. I think and I hope that we will see and hear this kind of statements more in the future on an EU level also. And the fourth area is to promote the SMRs. SMR is the most promising technology in this area, but even there, the biggest risk is not to have a clear playground for the, for the, for the regulation. At least the SMR, SMR coming of or SMRs should, should engage everyone to much more harmonized regulation and, and rules and get rid, in, rid of, of country-specific requirements. SMR is not an SMR if it cannot be a standardized, com, standardized product for all countries where it's, it's used. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I want to save the world. We will soon start up uh, Olkiluoto 3 and uh, we will produce carbon-free electricity for Finland and Nordic markets for at least 60 years. This gives us a lot of time to invent something even more climate friendly technologies or or so to to energize the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, illustrating the views of the industry itself and uh, starting from the, maybe this is self-evident as well, that or from the fact that safety is the basis for, for everything in nuclear on which we will have to build. 
uh, also highlighting the challenge of competitiveness and also offering some uh, solutions for that high quality standards harmonization which should be in the heart of the EU that's why we have the EU that to, to provide harmonized solutions and I also like very much how you put the taxonomy as a political test for the nuclear industry I think this is really a lacmus test for for our industry whether this is uh, politically acceptable uh, also in the future and uh, uh, we all must continue working in our capitals so that our politicians when they are traveling to Brussels they remember to take word nuclear into their suitcases when they when they go sometimes they tend to forget it in, in, in from their luggage SMR is not an SMR if it cannot be standardized I, th I think there is a lot of truth in that and SMRs are of course very important showing the future vision that there is a possibility there is a future for nuclear in in for the future. I would like to thank all the speakers in the uh, keynote speakers. I uh, first of all want to thank you for respecting the time timeline. We are well on time and I I am sure that uh, these keynote interventions, keynote speeches have given food for thought and also uh, food for the panel discussion that will start, start soon. Uh, panel discussion will be moderated by Alice Horakova and uh, I leave you now uh, all in her capable hands. Once again, thank you all of you participating and especially the keynote, those giving the keynote interventions.